Hello, Michael here again with another RenderMan 21 tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at uh, environment lights and uh, the environment daylight. So you can see I've already got a scene set up here with a character in it. Um, and actually before I go on, um, I will mention that it's probably best to check out my previous tutorial on basic lighting um, because I'm not going to cover the attributes that I already covered in those particular tutorials because they are the same for the environment light and the environment daylight as they are in the Pixar rectangular light or the disk light. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So um, with your scene open, um, if you want to add a light in, you can click the little sun here by right clicking and let's start with the dome light. So if you select that, it will create a dome light. So to edit the dome light, select it and then on the right with the attribute editor, you can go into its properties uh, in uh, the Pixar dome light shape tab. Uh, so you'll see first off we've got intensity and exposure. Like I said, I covered those previously, um, but a good starting point is 1.0 um, and zero for exposure will probably be fine most of the time. I'll just do a quick render now so you can see what that looks like. So as you can see, that's lit our character fairly well. Um, however, you'll notice that the background does appear black, even though we've got our color set to white. So we can actually turn visibility on of our dome light by uh, going to the uh, dome light shape properties, stop that IPR, um, and going to visibility and then selecting camera visibility on. And then if you run the IPR again, you'll see that the background is now white and it's evenly distributing um, a white light throughout the scene. As you can see, the shadows are being lit from uh, all angles. So the other thing you can do with, well, there's two actually other things that you can do with the environment light. You can set the color very simply by just using the color picker. Um, which is pretty straightforward. So I don't need to really show you how to do that. Just select a color and it will change the color of that background and then of your light and it will color your shadow somewhat, um, but only sympathetically. It won't actually change the shadow color. Um, but you can also assign an HDRI map to your light. So um, I'll grab a texture now and drop it in. Um, it is best to use HDR images if you can, um, but if you don't have them, JPEGs will work as long as they're a 360 image. Uh, but I've got some HDRs saved on my computer already, so I'll just use one. And as you can see, this is a .HDR. Um, and if I open up the scene, you'll see that it's 360 degrees. It's got up and down. Um, it's a spherical image, basically. And you need a sort of special type of setup to create these images. So um, if you're expecting to be able to run out there with your iPhone and shoot them, unfortunately, um, you're going to have some difficulty. Um, but yeah, I would just recommend uh, doing a quick Google search on how that all works. And if you're wanting to um, put in the time and money into doing that, then be my guest. I don't have time or money to be shooting these images, though. Um, so now with the camera visibility on, um, Let's do another render and let's have a look at and see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see that it's um, physically simulating the light of the background and what it is producing. Um, so the sun, I believe, will be to the left-hand side of him. Yeah, so you should just be able to see it behind him now. Um, and any high value areas of the image will create um, basically a more intense light source. The smaller those light source areas are, uh, the more sharp your shadows will be. So keep that in mind. Um, as you can see, because this has got quite a, a wide um, area of illumination, the shadows aren't going to be particularly sharp. And also because it's getting a lot of reflection from the sky and things as well. Um, if you're not happy with the orientation of your uh, image, you can always select your HDR, uh, your dome light. Um, and then just rotate it around just like you would with any other piece of geometry. Um, and one final thing on this one, um, you can actually enable temperature. So uh, this will add sort of a colorization effect to the color map. So for instance, this is sort of early in the morning, I would assume based on this image. So if I set the color temperature to something like 3500, it will tint everything a little bit more orange. So it gives it that golden hour feel. Um, so that's something that you can keep in mind if you're looking for a little bit of extra um, color from your environment maps, then that's a good way to do it. Inversely, if you're wanting a cooler color, you can increase it to something like 8500 and it will make it 
a lot more blue. Um, otherwise 6500 is your standard white point or you could just disable uh, the temperature. And that's that's pretty much all there is to the environment um, light or the, the, the dome light as they call it in 21. Um, like I said, uh, all the further attributes uh, you could find out more about on my previous basic lighting tutorial. Now let's have a look at the Pixar environment daylight. All right, back to our scene with no lights in it. Um, what I'm gonna do is drop in the Pixar environment daylight by right clicking on the sun and clicking the uh, Pixar Env daylight. And you'll get this um, thing appear. Um, and I'm just gonna hide the robot and the controls for a second there. So if I select this um, and go to the attribute editor, you'll see that I've got a couple of options. You've got intensity and exposure and direction. Now, intensity and exposure work the same as they did previously on all your other lights. So I'll just turn that on and show you what that render looks like real quick. Uh, and turn on camera visibility for our light. So you see as is the light defaults to sort of a very, very early morning um, lighting sort of scenario. Uh, so what we want to do is address where the sun is. So let's, um, I'll keep that IPR going. What you can do is if you have your, actually it might be easier to see if I turn off the visibility of the robot. Um, so what you can do is if you select your light and then you tap T on your keyboard, you'll actually be able to control um, the orientation of the sun by selecting the uh, little box that appears when you do so. So you can see I can just click and drag that around now and you see in the IPR it updates where the sun is. Zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. So you can pull that around anywhere in the scene you want and it'll update the, um, the position of the sun. So if I pull the camera around you'll be able to see the sun facing the front of him. All right, so you can see the sun in the sky there. Um, I might drop this down to make it a little bit more like dusky. Um, and I would actually say it's a little bit too yellow for dusk, but um, it, it, I'd rather something a little bit closer to pink, but um, that's fine for now. So let's go back into the attribute editor and have a look at some of the other attributes. Uh, so haziness is just the haziness of the horizon. Um, so you can control that by decreasing or increasing the value. Um, the lowest value that you should probably be working with according to the doc documentation is 1.7, which would suggest a very clear day. And as you can see, it blows out the sun quite a lot. Uh, let's stick with two for now though. Um, sky tint will change the tint of the sky. So um, I'm gonna leave it white for now. But uh, if I did change it to say something like green, obviously the sky turns green. Uh, obviously you'd probably be wanting to work with something like blue. Um, so there, you get that sort of effect. And that actually has given me quite a nice sunset look. So maybe I'll stick with that for the second. Um, and sun tint will change the tint of the sun. So if I go to like an orange and give it a real orange flavor, it will be a very orange sun. Sun size, um, at 1.0 it is a realistic sun size. Anything larger than that will make it look less realistic according to Render Man. So let's give it a value of 10 and you'll see that the sun is massive. Um, if I change my sky tint and my sun tint to be 1.0 again, um, and then maybe increase our haziness, Um, actually, um, to get the haziness to cross the sun, I've just realized that I'm going to have to lower that sun in the sky. So I'm just going to grab that sun and drop it down a touch. All right. So you can see it's started to do that Star Wars thing from A New Hope where you've got that real large sun on the horizon. So if you, that's the sort of effect you're going for, then um, that's what you want to sort of do. So I'm going to stop that IPR for now and let's have a look at the next section, which is month. So um, if you're using direction, it will be using all these um, attributes here to define where the sun is in the sky. However, if you want to set the um, sun in the sky based on uh, a specific place in the world. So let's say if I set the month to December because that's the current month um, and then I choose the date which is the 17th um, and the year which is 2016. The hour, the current hour is 1514 um, and the time zone is 10 uh, which is the GMT time zone. So the time zone for Melbourne is uh, plus 10 GMT. Uh, the latitude for Melbourne uh, is 37.8136 uh, 
south and the uh, longitude is 144.9631 east. So um, this will give me a realist re representation of where the sun would be in the sky uh, on this particular day. I'm gonna set the sun size back to one for that. Uh, sorry, I made a slight error there. So um, the hour is hour since midnight, so it wouldn't be 1500, which would be uh, you know army time, it'd be 15 hours. And if I wanted to increment that, um, say, quarter past three would be 15.25 um, because one quarter of an hour is 15 so 0.25 would be uh, 315 so if I do that IPR again um, you'll see that the sun is in the sky it's sort of heading towards sunset almost so uh, the sun will probably set around 7 p.m. tonight so um, it would be 19.0 um, and I have to run that IPR again to get it to update and you'll see that it's put the sun basically on the horizon. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what there is to uh, setting your sun position up. Um, it is um, a little bit more annoying than I would like it to, to be honest. Uh, but, uh, but once you sort of know what you're doing, it's not too hard. And probably setting the sun using the tiki is the easiest way to do it. Unless you're really trying to simulate um, a time of day in a specific place, which I don't necessarily think is um, that advantageous to anyone really maybe there's some very specific examples of people that would want to do that but um, I'm not I'm certainly not one of them um, so yeah you can still increase the sun size there if you wanted to and then you just have to rerun the IPR to get it to update and you get a lovely afternoon sunset shot um, so that's pretty much all there is to it for this tutorial like I said if you want to know more about the um, other um, general attributes that you can change um, which they are the same for all your basic lights uh, go ahead over to my basic lighting tutorial and that will solve that problem for you otherwise if you like this tutorial make sure you hit the like button so other people can find it um, and if you want to see more sub, uh, tutorials make sure you subscribe because i'm putting up two tutorials per week at the moment um, yeah otherwise that's it for now so thank you for watching and happy rendering